Hi, Tapas Fleming here, TATLife.com. From out of the blue, so many people have been asking me about how do I heal cancer? What can I do? So if you're working with cancer for yourself or someone you love, I have some hot tips for you that came right out of my cancer experience because you may not know, I had an advanced stage of cancer that had metastasized and I did a lot of TAT over a year along with other approaches and it's gone and it's been 15 years. So the first thing you can do is do the TAT pose and ask a cancer cell to be as big as you and say, I'd like to have a conversation with you. From my experience, it may not talk much. So just uh, see what you can see. Ask it about itself. Uh, What color is it? What's its experience of life? Just check it out. Hang out with it. See what you just feel about it. And if you feel like, I can't talk to a cancer cell. That's not real. Just imagine you could and then see what happens, okay? Because that might just be all you need. Then once it sort of feels like, well, that's all there is to say or see about that, ask an immune cell to show up, also be like as big as you, and then say to the immune cell, hey, you can now recognize this. Here's everything I know about this cancer cell, and I'm now conveying it to you, so tell all your buddies, go for it. What I've seen about cancer cells, not just in myself, but other clients, is typically they're like a dim bulb. They really look like an alcoholic who's living out on the streets and scraping through trash cans for something to eat. No awareness of anyone around or anything just like out of it. Dim bulb mentally, socially, no emotional connection, no feeling like, hey, I'm connected with life. Nothing like that. So even if you don't get any information at all, you can convey that kind of picture to an imaginary um, immune cell, and that is going to help you all while you're in the TAT pose. Another thing to know about cancer is that it eats sugar. I actually found out just a couple of weeks ago that it does a process of fermentation. So I think those little cancer cells may be alcoholics. They may be taking sugar and just turning it into alcohol and may actually be that. Anyway, sorry to tell you, but don't eat sugar. Don't drink alcohol. Don't eat things that turn into sugar that cancer could ferment for its happy life as a dull-witted alcoholic. Don't do that. Um, My experience is you just have to gut it out for three days and then you're over addictions to sugar and carbs. Sorry, but this would include chocolate. Okay. Other than that... um You can always do TAT with the thought, you just put this in the pot, the biggest thing that resulted in this condition without ever knowing what that biggest thing is that resulted in this condition. You can do that one day, and then you can do it the next day, and another day, and it's like plates in a cafeteria that are spring-loaded. You take the one off the top, clear that, and then the next one pops up, and then that's what you're clearing, even though you never know what it is. So that's it. And if you want uh, a bigger picture about getting well, I, at the end of my year dealing with cancer, looked at what were all the inner approaches I took so that I could put stuff in a pot, clear it with TAT and get better. So I did all of that and made it into a recording that's at the website called Getting Going with Getting Well, which also includes... Um, how to research in case you don't already know, how to get really inspired, and how to lead a team of health practitioners so you get well in the way that you want to. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening. And hey, I did it. You can do it. Oh, and one other thing. 
you of course have to check with your healthcare practitioner before embarking on anything that I've recommended here. You need to decide with your licensed healthcare practitioner and your own self and based on your research what's going to be best for you. Okay, thanks for listening and see you next time.